What's going on, everyone? It's Garnet Walters here, and I hope you're having a great day. Um, I want you to check this out. So on the screen here, this is what I was using in main stage. This is what my screen looked like when I was on gigs. <laughs> and this is what my screen looks like now after the necessary changes that I needed to make. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the steps from changing the first setup to my new setup on Main Stage 3. As you can see here, this is the edit screen on Main Stage 3, and this is what my workspace looks like. So as you can see, there's nothing really going on, just keyboard, MIDI indicator, pedals, and you know, the mod wheels and the pitch bender. And the reason why I had this setup was because at the time, I was using this. I was using Logic Remote and I could see all my faders and stuff. I can see all the levels. I can mute, I could solo, I can do all that stuff. And it was very helpful, you know. Um, the controller is really light because it's, you know, it's an iPad. So I didn't have to do anything to worry about in terms of, you know, portability and stuff. However, the one issue that I had was the connection. Um, if I'm on a gig, I'm not really going to depend on the Wi-Fi of the building because the majority of the time everyone's going to be using it. I'm not going to bring my own router. I find that that's a bit of a hassle. And the other thing is when I use an ad hoc network, meaning I created a bootleg network from my laptop to my iPad, I would find that it would work. It would work for you know, a certain amount of time and then after a while it starts to lag. So I had to try and do something different. So the necessary change started with this. I ended up getting the Nano Control 2 by Korg for Christmas. Shout out to my guy who got this for me for Christmas. I really appreciate it. You're a real one. <laughs> so I got the Nano Control 2. I downloaded the editor on Korg.com and started to fiddle around with some of the settings and stuff and uh, just trying to figure this thing out. Then I ended up going back to main stage to put this thing to work. So as you can see here, I have one, two, three, four, five instruments. And again, when I was using Logic Remote, I could see everything on the screen. But because I have the nano control, I have to build something here. So what I ended up doing was go into the layout, go to group controls. I go to eight vertical faders like that. I'm gonna put this in the center like this and then move everything over like that. And I think I'm gonna move the pedal over here. And there's gonna be a reason why. As a matter of fact, I'll just delete it and then put it up there. This MIDI indicator can stay right here for now. I'll bring, oops, I'll bring this down a bit. There we go. Then after that, as a matter of fact, you know what? I'll put this up. And the reason why I'm gonna put this up is because I have to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight solo buttons and eight mute buttons. I'm gonna put that there. Put this here. It's gonna look a little rough, but I'm just walking you through what I did. I bring the piano, bring this down. What? There we go. Then I'm gonna put another set of buttons. There we go. Okay. So now I start assigning the faders that are on the nano control to the faders that I put on the screen here. Just press assign. Let's click on each one here. Then 
then after I get the faders done, I go to each button. And then do the same thing. I'm having one issue though, and the issue is, as you can see, when I press the solo button, it'll light up, but when I press it again, it still stays on. Then when I press it one more time, then it turns off, and then when I press it again, it stays off. So I wanna change that to when I press it one time, the button will light up, and then when I press it again, it'll turn off. So I have to go back to the layout to fix this. So what I'll have to do here is I'll have to go to the type and then I would go to absolute. And just as a quick test, we're gonna go back to edit and see if the absolute works. So here we go. Press it and it's on. Press it again and it's off. So now, since that works, I have to go back into the layout and do that with all the other buttons too. So after changing all of these buttons into the absolute setting, where it turns on and off, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and check the colors of these mute and solo buttons. It may seem like a minor detail, but to me it's important because I don't wanna to have to figure out which one is mute and which one is solo. So I'm gonna go and click on this M here, and it's like a blue green color. So I'm gonna go back to the layout and I'm going to change the color to blue. So after changing the colors in the layout, I'm gonna to go to edit to check it out. Mute. All of them are blue, and that's cool. And I don't think I need to do anything with solo because the solo one is yellow, right? So they're all yellow, so that's fine. So now we get to the part where we start assigning the faders to the different instruments. So I'm going to start with this first fader and I'm going to assign it to the first fader here, which is the piano. I'm going to put volume. And as you can see, now both faders are in sync. Then I'm going to go to press this button here, go to the piano and that's going to be solo. So here, solo, make sure that works. And then I press this button here, 
which is the mute. I'm going to go to Bosendorf for piano, and then I'm going to go to mute. And as you can see there, that works perfectly. And I'm going to do the same thing with all of these other faders. Four more to go. Now that all the faders and buttons are assigned to its respective instruments, now I want to make sure that the levels are okay. So I'm going to turn all of these down and I'm going to play around with some of the sounds here. Sounds great so far, but we're not done yet. There are a couple things that I want to take care of. So I'm going to go back to the layout and I am going to add a few more things. The first thing I'm going to add is going to be a vertical meter. And I'm going to use this so I can see my levels what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to add a background. So I'm going to go here to this screen and I'm going to let's see. I'm going to add a background. Put something right here. And I'm sure I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing with this here. So I'm going to put some text here on here, text, and I'm going to type MIDI. So I'm going to add some text here. I'm going to drag this over here like that. And I'm going to type MIDI. And I'm going to make the font bigger. I'm going to put it to, let's try 48, see what that looks like.
All right. So I type that in. I'm going to take the frame around the text off. And once I do that, I'm going to move this MIDI indicator right here. I might make it a little smaller. The next thing I'm going to add in terms of text is going to be CPU. One more thing. I usually like to have my last fader as my master fader. So the way I go about taking care of that is I'm going to go back to this folder here. So I go back to this folder here. I'm going to click on this fader and I'm going to put it at output one and two, put it at volume, and that's working properly. And then also just in case, I like to assign the buttons as well. So this is how I changed my main stage three setup from the first boring one to what you see now. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to check out the video. I hope that you found it to be helpful. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to type something in the comments below. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please press the subscribe button and also press on the notification so you'll know when I put out a new video. I really appreciate the support. And again, thank you for watching and for checking out this whole video. Peace.